There is a region of Italy which boasts a staggering seven World Heritage Sites. Tuscany is Italy's most popular tourist region, and Pisa is home to one of the most recognizable buildings in the world. And it's the first stop on my next rail journey, exploring the north of Italy. This was so cool. Famed for being home to some of the most scenic rail journeys in the world. Don't look down at all. Packed with enchanting landscapes, unique traditions and irresistible food, all waiting to be explored. There you go. Join me on my Italian Express. I'll be taking a rail journey through the three great Renaissance cities of Tuscany, beginning here in Pisa. With a vibrant street life dominated by locals rather than tourists, there is so much to explore in addition to the famous Leaning Tower. And I have just enough time before my train to take a whistle-stop tour of the city. And the other thing that Pisa is famous for? The birthplace of the Vespa. And guess what? I'm gonna get one. Buongiorno. Oh, quante Vespe. Sì. Belle, eh? I've been riding Vespas since I was 11 years old. Gino and three kisses. There you go. Thank you. And scooters are a great way to experience Italian cities. The Vespa was originally designed for women. And the reason is because on motorbikes, men could go like that. Clearly, women couldn't because they had a miniskirt. The reason why the Vespa was designed for women, because women, they couldn't do this. Look. Ooh. And off you go. Pisa, here I come. Pisa has always had a reputation as a city of youth and rebellion. Excuse me, lady, do you know the way to London? It has a huge student population and is home to Europe's oldest university. The tower was built in the 12th century, and everyone asks, why does he lean? Well, Pisa is the Greek word for marshland. The tower was built on very soft ground. In fact, the entire city was built on marshland, so the tower was doomed from the very start. Each year, over a million visitors come to marvel at its lean. Now, this is Piazza dei Cavalieri, which means Night Square, and it's a great spot to escape from the crowds of the Leaning Tower. Now, the word Vespa means wasp in English, but it's called Vespa because the way it looks, not the way it sounds. Apparently, the designers told the body shape was wasp-like, and the steering rod looked like an antenna. Now, unusually for Tuscany, Pisa is not really known for its food. But I've heard that in this place, they make a very special dessert. This flat peasant cake is called castagnaccio. Andrea? Andrea. Buongiorno. Che si dice? Eh. Allora, che mi fai assaggiare? Il castagnaccio. Il castagnaccio. Ok. Assaggiare. Dove, dove ce lo mangiamo? He's cut me a slice of this castagnaccio. Ma che c'è dentro? C'è della farina di castagne, yeah. olio, sale e acqua. E basta. E basta. So this is go uh, chestnut flour, olive oil, water, sugar, and a few pine kernels on top. Most of Italian food, especially when it's peasant food, is, uh, doesn't look good, but it tastes amazing. Wow, bro. And they cook it in a proper wooden oven. Quindi si faceva questo prima della pizza? No. He's actually claiming that the castagnaccio is older than a pizza. I'm not sure by that because I'm Neapolitan. And if it's true, I'm not gonna like it. Whoa. I have a train to catch, so it's back on the scooter to Pisa Station. This is the Arno River. It cuts through Florence and then Pisa, and it goes all the way to the sea. Commuter trains run several times an hour between Tuscany's main cities. 
I'm traveling the 12 miles from Pisa to Italy's city of music, Lucca, and then on to the magical city of Florence. It's around a 20 minutes journey through some stunning Tuscany countryside to the walled city of Lucca. Good morning, ticket please. I validated it. Perfect. <laughs> a quiet oasis after the crowds of Pisa. These walls are what Lucca is famous for. First, they were built by the Romans and they form an almost perfect circle around the city. Lucca is known as the city of composers. It has given birth to some of the world's greatest musicians, including Puccini, the master of the opera like La Bohème and Madame Butterfly. It's very easy to get lost in Lucca with all these narrow streets, but I've been given the address of a local violin maker who is going to show me his craft, and I think he's somewhere that way. Violins were created in Italy in the 16th century, and Fabio is a world-renowned violin maker. I can definitely hear violins. Fabio? Ciao! Ciao bello, tutto a posto? Tutto a posto. Quanto tempo ci vuole a fare un violino? Ci vogliono 240 ore. E di quanto lavoro. costa? I eh, violini di usuria partono dai 7.000 euro, 8.000 euro. 7.000 euro? Sì. So a handmade violin is between 7 and 8,000 euro. The reason is, it's all handmade and it takes 240 hours exactly to make one. And so far it's made in 170 instruments by hands. So if you are the tax man, you know exactly how much this guy earns. Cioè? <laughs> 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 e poi? Prego. Prego. Sicuro? Certo. Eh? certo. I want certo. to try because then I can say that I've made a violin. Bisogna capire un attimino toccando il legno da che parte va la direzione ah. del legno. So he said the first thing you need to do is to use your hands to touch the wood to see where, where are you going to go. And you need to be patient. There's no idea why. Va bene? Va bene, dai. Diciamo che sei sulla strada giusta. He doesn't look very happy. <laughs> This is going to be worth at least 20,000 euro, eh? Questo 20.000 euro lo dobbiamo okay. vendere perché l'ho fatto io. Vieni a mangiare? Perfetto. Eh? Ti ringrazio. So he showed me his craft, I'm going to show him my craft. I'm going to cook for him. One hour? One hour. Okay. One hour. Carry on. Grazie. Carry on uh, shaving and do whatever you do. I'll see you in an hour. Ciao. Anything you cook in this part of Italy is likely to feature one particular ingredient. All the area around here, Lucca, Pisa, there is one thing that they're very famous for, asparagus. Wherever you go around here, restaurants, they have pages and pages of asparagus recipe on the menu. So to show off its delicate flavor, here are my two favorite ways to prepare asparagus. Super simple and super speedy with pecorino cheese and a poached egg. Now, I get a knife and just all the stock, get rid of it, then get a potato peeler. I choose three fingers, very gently, I'll just peel them like this. Place in a shallow pan of boiling salted water. To have the al dente perfect asparagus bite, four minutes, no longer than that. Now, as the asparagus boil, let me show you what I've done here. I've done some griddle asparagus. The way to do it, put them in a tray, three or four tablespoons of olive oil, salt and pepper, very hot griddle pan, put them on top, three to four minutes, the job is done. So, four minutes have gone, so put them here and let them rest. Look at that color, beautiful radiant green. Now, how do you make a poached egg? There is a lot of chefs with a lot of technique, me, personally, I don't do any swirl or anything like that. I get a pan like this one, and I'll make sure that the water is not boiling. It's just slightly simmering, okay? Now, I'm gonna add white wine vinegar in there. You probably want about three or four tablespoons. Salt is already in there because we cooked the asparagus. Now, break it into the cup like this. You put it at the bottom of the cup first, and then, slowly, slowly, put the egg in there. 
Now look what's happening. The egg white is all around the yolk. I'm barely touching it. Look, that's what you have to do. Now, the one we boiled, where we go, I got some melted butter, and I'm going to drizzle it on top like that. And my secret ingredient is pecorino cheese. Nothing better than grated cheese on top of asparagus. And this is my first asparagus dish. Look at that, nice and simple. For the second dish, remove the poached eggs and place on the grilled asparagus. Then I'm gonna drizzle with extra virgin olive oil. A little touch of black pepper. And there you are. These are two beautiful ways to cook my favorite vegetable ever. Fabio, guarda che ti ho preparato, va. Eh? Che ne dici? Wow, fantastico. Questo è un pezzo di una viola. This is awesome. He just gave me this as a present. Ah, grazie. Prego. Grazie. grazie And this is a present for you. Thank you. Okay? Thank you very much. Actually, I have another present. Ready? Eh? Bellissimo. Puccini. Puccini in sottofondo. Luca. Asparagus. Buon appetito. Grazie. I'm on a train journey through the romantic cities of northern Tuscany. Today I'm going to Florence, and one of the things that I've realized in Italy, that train tickets are quite cheap, 7 euro, seven euro 80. 7 euro to this, yeah? Okay. I'm leaving the city of Lucca and making the 60 miles journey east to the Tuscan capital of Florence, which takes me through some of the region's industrial heartland. This town Prato is known as the Manchester of Tuscany because it's the center of Italy's textile industry. And 30 minutes on is Florence the birthplace of Renaissance art and architecture. Romantic, enchanting, and utterly irresistible. Hi. Hi. Not unlike my host for the day, Cecilia. So, yeah, I'll, I'll be your guide in Florence now. Fantastic. <laughs> She's lived in Florence all her life and is an exceptional home cook. What's this market called? It's called Sant'Ambrogio Market. This is famous for the freshness of the fruit and the vegetables. Cecilia is part of a very special network of Italian home cooks known as Le Cesarine. What's a Cesarina? Cesarina is um, a lady that uh, have guests at uh, her home. Okay. and uh, teach uh, how to make the traditional recipes. So people, they come to, the, uh, yes, to your house, yes, in your cesarina, yes, and they yes. eat. And they eat and, and uh, learn how to cook. Cecilia has invited me to cook with her this evening for some of her guests. So it's time to shop. Leonardo, ah. hi. Leonardo, ah, like Leonardo da Vinci. Buongiorno. Ciao. Buongiorno, Buongiorno. piacere, Gino da Campo. Io sono Leonardo Roselli. Uh, fresh rosemary, have you got some fresh sì. rosemary? Due o tre, va, due o tre. Delle belle cipolle. Firm, I like them yes. firm. Quante te ne do? What do you want to buy? Florentine tomatoes. Oh, basil. basil. Yes. Cucumber. Ah, cucumber. Yes. Thank you, Leonardo. Florence's historic center is less than two square miles in size. So the stroll back to Cecilia's house gives us the perfect opportunity to take in its highlights. First, Ponte Vecchio. Built by the Romans in 996, it's the oldest bridge in the city. Bello, eh? Bello. Beautiful. Yes, beautiful. beautiful. Yes. So I used to come here with a girlfriend of mine because uh, there were uh, hippie guys. Okay. Very beautiful. That, uh, so so the... you used to come here to catch the hippie yes. guys? It's... Yes. Right. yes. Is it true that Ponte Vecchio is the only bridge in Florence that has not been bombarded by the yes. Germans? Yes, the Germans uh, were uh, 
have had pity of us and, and save uh, this uh, beautiful And they village. saved on purpose. Yes, yes, yes. So where are we going next? Now we go in Piazza Signoria I, to I'm, see Palazzo Vecchio. I'm going to follow you. <laughs> Florence is home to a third of the world's art treasures, which draws over 10 million visitors here each year. See how beautiful is Palazzo Vecchio. Um, and this is one of the most famous uh, uh, piazza in the world. Yes, it's my favorite. How do you deal with all these tourists? You live here. Uh, yes, it's a problem, but uh, the economy of Florence is based on tourism, so we have only to stand and and be grateful to, to them. Probably the most famous statue in the world, Michelangelo's Davide, takes pride of place in the piazza. There he is. David. Look at him. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. Just a couple of minutes stroll along one of the main shopping streets of Via dei Calzaioli brings us to the magnificent Duomo. After St. Peter's in Rome and St. Paul in London, this is the third biggest cathedral in the world. Look at that. This incredible building took 140 years to build and its dome is the largest masonry structure in the world. Just a 10 minutes walk and we are back at Cecilia's house. Where is the kitchen? Ah, 41 steps. Uh, what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All the way up there? So, so, so. Bye, bye, bye. I follow you. <laughs> this is where the magic happens, <laughs> right? Yes. And for tonight's paying guest, Cecilia is making a Tuscan panzanella salad of tomatoes, onions and bread, while I cook the perfect accompaniment, chicken tights in beer sauce. So the first thing we're going to do Onions that we go from the markets. Uh, where is the bean, please? The bean? The bean. No, Mr. Bean. The bean. Amunezza. Ah. <laughs> Try not to knife Over me there. as you point uh, to the bean, please. Over there. So if you go rubbish, mm. the bean is here. Right? <laughs> I'm also going to put a little bit of rosemary. One stalk, just take the leaves out like that. Chop it up roughly. This is a recipe that I created uh, for the boys when they come around and they want something quick to eat. So rosemary, roughly chopped, goes in there. Uh, then we got the onion, again, roughly chopped. That's exactly what I want, in there. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil. I'm gonna add a couple of pinches of salt on the onions because by doing that, you release the water of the uh, onions and it gets nice and crispy. So on the fire, eight to 10 minutes, and the job is done. Only 10 minutes to cook the onions? Hey, 10 minutes oh, to cook ten it. Minutes to 10 cook minutes to cook the onions. 10 minutes to cook the onions, oh. because then after I'm gonna add the chicken. Oh. As soon as it starts to sizzle, uh -huh. I'm gonna add the pancetta. Hmm. So I got some beautiful diced pancetta here. As soon as the onions sizzle, pancetta goes in. Like that. Eight, 10 minutes, and then we add the chicken. How often do you got people around in the house? Twice a week. When did you start to cook? Why do you like cooking so much? Uh, I start from when I was a child. And why don't you do some uh, cooking show on television? Because it's difficult. Uh, why is it difficult? I, um, I don't know. But because a for seriously, me... a beautiful woman like you mm. should be very easy to do it. Uh. Uh, watch out, <laughs> Nigella Lawson. She's coming. <laughs> She's coming. Oh, I don't have the breast on Nigella. <laughs> Now, so the pancetta is getting slightly crispy and the onion is getting colored. So at this stage, do you get the chicken? I'm using chicken thighs. The skin goes down because we want to make the skin nice and crispy. Like this. All with the skin down. And leave it like that for about 10 minutes. Don't start to move it around because I want the color now going into the skin. Well, I still got another half an hour. Why are you dressing it now? Because it's better even the day after. Ah, yeah. so what Cecilia is doing is putting salt and vinegar before because she wants to release all the water mm -hmm. from the tomato and the onion. So then when she puts the crispy uh, bread, <laughs> mm -hmm. soaks up the juices, yes. panzanella the down. Magic. The magic. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Turn the chicken thighs over. 
So once you turn around, we put a little bit of uh, uh, vegetable stock on top. You can use a stock cube if you want. And then, yeah. <laughs> cheers. Add two bottles of pale beer at room temperature. And it's very important to cook this without the lid because the last thing that you want is the water to go back into the gravy. So keep it without the lid and you will see in half an hour you're gonna have a nice, beautiful, juicy gravy. Do your guests know that I'm cooking for them? Do they know? Yes, of course they, they are. I hope you charge them a lot of money. Ah! Oh, <laughs> you wanna try? Oh yes, of course. Mm. So this is the gravy. Mmm, perfect, perfect. I'm done. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Look at that. How simple is that? Beautiful. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so, here we have my chicken with pancetta, rosemary in a beer gravy, and Cecilia's panzanella. Fantastico. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Look at the parts or? Yeah, yeah. Alright, guys. Hello. I hope you're hungry. Oh, yeah. Definitely. There we are. Amazing. <laughs> okay, buon appetito. Grazie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How is it going? Really good, thank Brilliant. you. Perfect. <laughs> Panzanella or to the chicken? Both, but especially <laughs> chicken, especially <laughs> chicken. Okay, 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 you Even want Panzanella. <laughs> Should we leave them and we're going to clean the kitchen? Yes, it's better. Okay. Yeah? Let's go. See, it looks a bit awkward. Oh, yeah, it's okay. okay. <laughs> Next time, I'm heading to the Lombardy region, from the glamour of Milano okay, hammers, to the beautiful Bergamo, home of the Stracciatella ice cream. Can I? Sure. Pass on. Gino's Italian Express cookbook is now available at bookshops and online retailers.